Okay, so I'll talk about basic water harvesting, backyard water harvesting in the city, just some of the basic components you're gonna need. So here's a simple tank, it's about 400 liters, and we'll just start from the bottom up. So what you're gonna need is a good foundation for your rain tank. Now, if it's a small tank like this, that could be uh, just like a road base or um, gravel foundation. In this case, we've raised it up uh, with some bricks we had on site and a couple boards just so that we could have a bit of gravity uh, feed here. One thing about uh, gravity pressure is that you get only half a PSI per foot of elevation. So you can see here we're about two and a half feet so we probably have about one PSI. So not very much <laughs> but enough to, uh, to fill up a water container. So with this tank we got the foundation it's built up. Um, then we have the inflow coming in up top so you can kind of see we cut into an old aluminum pipe um, you know about a two inch pipe coming off the roof and we put in that's all new we, we cut into that switched over to ABS pipe which is the black here and uh, basically with a mix of, of fittings we got ourselves into this overflow here um, one important consideration is that you always want to take note of your intake size. So here we have a two inch pipe and that means that we cannot have less than a two inch overflow because if that ever comes ripping down in a big storm you don't want your tank overflowing. So we have the same size on the inflow on the outflow which is two inches. Uh, now in between that you see on our tank we have this really unusual box sitting on top. Okay, so what we have here, as opposed to just a simple screen filter, which you would commonly get, and some people do a first flush diverter up at the roof. And what that is, is it takes the first uh, five, 10 liters of water and flushes it down out to the side, down to the storm drain, so it doesn't go in the tank. So what we have here is an alternative to that and, a, and an improvement on a filtration system, which is a wetland um, system that's in there. So the reason to flush that first five or 10 liters is because rainwater, although it sounds great, um, can be very dirty. It's gonna have all kinds of bird uh, feces in it, whatever's up lying on the roof, and lots of uh, just sediment as well. So leaves and brush and stuff like that. That isn't necessarily bad, but you don't want it in your rain tank. So what this does is it provides both a primary filtration and it takes care of the first flush of water because basically this holds water. It's on the bottom here we have pond liner, EPDM pond liner. Um, it is this heavy material. And then running through there is this four inch perf pipe. So there's a hole drilled in the wood and then this is pressure fit into that pond liner and it's got the sock on it so you can buy this stuff with the with the sock so it actually comes like that and then that just drops into the tank then on the very top of that we have a screen and that just gets hose clamped on like that and so basically when it rains that first 10 liters gets absorbed by the plants because it'll be dry usually when you're getting your first nasty rains that flush everything off the roof so the plants eat that up right away and then it flows through the sock and down. And then when you get the big heavy storms, then the water actually fills up and goes down through this open um, end that just has the metal cloth. So on any rain tank system, you're gonna be wanting to have some kind of first flush diverter uh, and primary filtration. So in this case, this little constructed wetland in a box basically takes care of those two elements together. Um, it's a little wetland. It's got some peat moss in there. It's got some compost So that takes care of all the bird poop and whatever else might be up on the roof um, And it turns it into actually luscious plants because up top we have some uh, native grasses that are planted there And they, they really enjoy that high fertility and then I guess the last thing would be the outflow so again needs to be uh, same uh, dimension pipe is the inflow just to make sure that you're always able to spill that water in a, in a major rain event and this is simply just going back down to the storm drain where we initially cut into and that means when the tanks full it just goes right back into the storm drain and away we go so why not have bigger or more of these well here we are we're in Victoria 
it is a Mediterranean climate, modified Mediterranean climate. And frankly, I'd love to have more, there's no doubt about it, but we give up here on the idea of running our drip irrigation system off of rainwater. The reason for that is we essentially don't get rain from May until September. And so even a small garden like this, and we have a nursery and other outdoor water needs that most people might not, we're gonna use 20, 30, up to 40,000 liters of water in a summer. And we can't have a hundred of these on site. So we use this for the chickens. Uh, they get all the water through the winter and all through the summer that we're able to keep up with their drinking water. We're able to use it in the, in the shoulder seasons for the greenhouse. Um, but we are not able to run our irrigation system off of a tank this small. And in fact, even, even five or 10 of these would not be enough to run our irrigation system through the summer. So we're happy to use our, our really good uh, municipal water system here in Victoria for those needs and use this when it's available in its highest use.